What is going on guys, The Real KJ3 here, and I recently purchased a vintage Toshiba satellite on eBay and it's in need of a little bit of TLC. Opening up the laptop, we can see that the keys are rather nasty and yellow, and the same can be said for the mouse buttons and whatever is on the side towards the corner of the laptop as well. The good thing is this all looks like an easy cleanup with some soapy water and maybe some goo gone, and a duster for the screen. My biggest tackle is definitely going to be the mouse buttons and the sticker residue that age rather poorly on the side there. Closing the laptop, we can see that for some reason the original owner wanted to stick something to the top of it and put some adhesive and Valco strips, and those will probably put up a good fight as well. But moving on to the specs, on one side we have our volume control slider and audio input and output. We also have a cover that slides back to reveal the power buttons, and on the back side we have our I.O. ports. Starting out is the charging port, then the PS2 mouse and keyboard input, a single USB 1.0 port, infrared cover, exhaust fan, the serial port, the printer port, and then we have the VGA out. On the other side we have a slot for expansion cards for telephones and modems, a CD drive, and a 3.5 floppy disk drive. On the back side we have all the flashy stickers for advertising all the groundbreaking features this all-in-one laptop had to offer when it first came out. So testing the laptop before I give it a clean and a new CMOS battery, I'm going to plug it into the charger and see if it will boot to anything or if anything is on the hard drive at all. Alright, that's a good sign. Starting Windows 95, so it looks like we got a copy of Windows 95 on here. So booting up, it actually looks like it still has all of the original owner's programs and uh, documents, but I'm going to respect his privacy and not go into his documents, but this does look like it was used as a work laptop. So I'm going to test the mouse here and see that we got a bit of a ghosting problem with the screen, but that's not really a problem, that's just how these screens were made for these. And the mouse buttons seem to work, but gosh, are they grimy. Ugh, I feel like I need a bath after this. So let's see what we're rocking as far as a hard drive here. Go into my computer. It's hard to use with just that trackball there. Right click. Properties. Uh, looks like we're rocking a whole two gigabyte hard drive and not too much of it left. So maybe I'll do an upgrade of that in the future, but I'm definitely going to keep that the way it is now. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, power this off. The screen does look like it does have a little bit of burning in the edges, but what are you going to do? It's a 20 plus year old laptop and somehow the hinges are still good, but the bottom isn't half bad. But yeah, just the ghosting on the screen is going to make gaming on this a bit of a stretch. Or at least an eyesore, no pun intended. And it also looks like we have Office 95 installed on here too. That's all going to get erased because I'm going to do a fresh copy of Windows 95 or 98 if it goes to plan. So let's go ahead and power this off and give this a good, well-deserved bath. Okay, so flipping the laptop over, we just gotta slide this battery cover over and then pull outwards, and it actually disconnects the battery. And you can see it's a rather large battery. And shout out to the eBay seller who sold me this because they were cool enough to actually give me two of them. I don't know if they actually hold charge and I haven't really tested them, but it's still cool to have. So now we just gotta take out a few of these back screws, which are not really hidden, so they should be easy to take out. Alright, so since those screws are removed, I can remove this little keyboard cover port here. I'm not really sure what you call it. And after that is removed, you can just tilt the keyboard upwards, but you do got to be careful because there is a ribbon cable holding it together. But for right now, I'm just going to fold it over and then continue to remove the screws holding the bezel in place.
Okay, so after removing the screws and using a pry tool, all you have to do is just separate the top from the bottom. And I'm not going to bother disconnecting the other ribbon cables because I don't really need to open it fully, but I need to get at the CMOS battery and clean those pads off. And we should be good to go, but I do need to remove the rubber piece here. The part that kind of sucks is I'm actually going to have to break it off and then fix it after. Here is the new CMOS battery. It has the same specs as the old one that's here, but it's a different shape. It's two batteries instead of six, but it said it was compatible with this laptop specifically, so I'll have to take its word for it, but I'll see when I set the time and start it up. And getting back to the trackpad, you can see where I had to break it off, but for a very good reason, because boy, that is nasty. Okay, now that the mouse buttons and the keyboard is cleaned, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my soldering iron with a flat tip, and I'm actually going to melt the plastic around the foot of that to hold it in place. And it did the job just well. Nice and easy. I didn't need to do it to the other side because that one still had a bit of life to it. Just that one side was giving me hell. Now since that's done, all we got to do is close that up. Make sure all the buttons are good. I'm gonna put in the screws that was underneath the keyboard before I reattach it. I might as well get the rest of the screws while I'm at it. Reattaching the hard drive is pretty much the same as any other laptop. Put it in the cage and slide it forward and screw the cage back in. Now all I gotta do is just reattach the ribbon cable for the keyboard, slide it back in place, and then put that cover over. And while I'm here, I'm gonna use some Goo Gone to get rid of this really old and dried up sticky sticker residue. And it seems to come off just fine, so luckily that wasn't too much of a fight. Now I'm gonna try and battle with these Velcro strips, which the adhesive is working great to this day. Don't know how long that's been on there, but... Luckily, two of them were rather easy, but that first one gave me absolute hell. But it's nothing that Gugon can't take care of. Alrighty, let's go ahead and power it on with the charger plugged in and see if we still get anything from the hard drive. Alright, we're going to go ahead and set the time while we're here because it is a new CMOS battery, so that is expected. Okay, so since Windows 95 is booting up okay and everything seems to be in order, I'm going to go ahead and power it back down and give it a fresh copy of the operating system. First, I got to put in the Windows 95 boot disk that has the CD-ROM drivers, kind of similar to Windows 98, and then put in the Windows 95 CD.
But before I actually get to the installation portion, I'm going to go ahead and format the hard drive just to make sure that it doesn't just overwrite the system files and keep the personal files. And for nostalgia purposes, I'll give you a few little clips of the Windows 95B setup. Easier to use, Windows 95 is the easiest Windows yet. Boy, were we in for a treat. At least at that time. Okay, now that the setup has finished, I'm going to go ahead and remove the boot disk. I'm going to leave the CD inside and then give it a restart. It's good to see the mouse drivers are still working and the keyboard is too, but I don't know as far as what's going to happen with the other drivers, so I imagine the graphics ones are not going to be there. But while it's getting ready to run Windows for the first time, I guess I'll have to find out and see what's available. Good to see all my lights are working still. And it doesn't look like it's capturing all the drivers, but I'm sure I'll be able to find some archive versions somewhere. It's a good thing I have a USB floppy drive, so I can actually copy over files onto a floppy disk and be able to use USB on the Toshiba, hopefully, if these drivers work. Because the more and more I go, as far as installing the drivers and at least trying to find them, it's proving to be more and more difficult as I go. But hopefully I'll find some sort of luck with that. So even though the drivers were compatible with the Toshiba itself, it still didn't work so it might be a problem with the port. It did light up the flash drive, but it didn't get any sort of recognition to the drive itself. But now I'm going to try and use SciTech Display Doctor to figure out what kind of graphics driver I need for the screen to be the right resolution. Okay, so after installing and trying the auto detect, it seems that either it found nothing because all it would do was just flash the screen and then go right back to detecting the graphics hardware. So this seemed to be unsuccessful. But after searching on Google for the drivers, it came up with a few chips and technologies ones and none of them worked. So after trying to find driver files for the sound and all the other hardware, I was quickly finding out that Windows 95 driver compatibility was slim to none. So I ended up formatting the hard drive and actually installing Windows 98. And by the miracles of the computer gods, all of the drivers that Windows 98 came with was compatible with all of the hardware that Toshiba had. So I literally had to install Windows 98 and it came with all the drivers and I would have saved a bunch of time. And looking in the system properties, you can see in the driver manager that there are no unknown devices. It had every single driver that I needed. And in case anybody was wondering, the video driver is Chips and Technologies 655555. But since this video has been running a little longer than I wanted it to, part two is going to insist of gaming on this laptop and really giving it a good stress test. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out the Instagram at therealkj3.exe where I'll be posting stuff in regards to this laptop and other technological videos, pictures, and a bunch of other gaming stuff. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned a thing or two. And until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.